All right, let's get started here. I'm going to show you how to do a traditional method to do a leak down test on a four-stroke engine. I'm also going to uh, show the smoke version after this, but pull that battery out, check it out, make sure it's good, or replace it. Next, start to pull the uh, engine cover so you can turn the motor over and then also set the timing to the proper position of top dead center compression. I found some debris in there. Check this out. That's why you got to be collecting evidence as you go. Not sure what this is yet, but we'll get to it. All right, this plug's going to expose the T. Now I'll take the valve cover off so I can actually watch the camshafts operate. And then uh, I always do a valve clearance inspection too. You'll see that in a later video. All right, get that valve cover out of the way. Now we're going to turn the engine over. You have to know whether you need to go clockwise or counterclockwise. Check your manual. They saw me turn the motor over, and what I was doing was I was just eyeballing for those cam lobes to be facing away from each other. Because what that means is they shouldn't be touching the valve bucket, and that should be top dead center compression. Next thing you're going to do is down inside the inspection hole, you can clearly see that T and how that line is right in the middle of the hole. So that's how you set it at top dead center, but then you need to come around the other side of the motorcycle. Just in case you're not sure, those three numbers and arrows are where I'm going to be talking about next. And you're going to determine the cam timing to see if anything looks crazy. You can see the number one where I have the flashlight, and I'll get parallel with the head here. It's pretty parallel. It's tipped up a little bit, which is an indication of a stretch timing chain. And then on this Suzuki, they have, you wrap the chain around, and from two until three, you would count those number of pins. Take a look real quick at this photo, and you'll see from pin two to pin three, there's 15 pins required on this engine. But just the fact that the two and the three are straight up and down right now is a really good indication that this did not jump cam timing and that it is correct. Now I'm going to do the leak down test. All right, man, here's your gift. I'm going to show you how to test the tool and verify the tool actually functions before hooking up to the bike. Put some pressure on there and then put your finger over the tool verifying that the gauge will go up and hold pressure. That'll tell you your tool's good. Not that that o-ring right there by my thumb is good, but just that the tool itself and the hose to it has integrity. Don't forget, just like our compression video, don't cross thread that hose putting it in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and apply the air pressure and see what we got. It is not good, as you can see from this photo, we have massive amount of leakage. It's actually dumping my air compressor so fast it keeps running. Check this out. All right, as you guys can see, we got severe leakage, right? So now what we're gonna do is try and figure out where it's coming from. So take like a soapy water, spray around. You wanna listen inside the intake. I don't really hear much coming out of there. So I can go around and listen in the exhaust try and hear if I hear any howling in there and I don't really either but I got a lot coming from in here so there's there's always a chance that the tool could be leaking but we're not leaking 100% but here's the big reason I wanted to do this let me try and get up here and get stable doing the leak down test one of the advantages you get is I could see if the antifreeze is bubbling so that is a great time right now to try and see the antifreeze is bubbling, it's not. If it was, that'd be a good indication of a cracked head or, or something else. So more than likely, we just got some rings that are uh, blowing by. And I just would have to believe that there's possibly the valves might be leaking a little bit, but we definitely got a major source of leak. I'm gonna keep digging in. I'm gonna keep spraying around, making sure there's nothing, you know, that couldn't be overlooked like a head gasket or something. You know, we're pretty dang sure at this thing has a bent rod from uh, the gas being left on. And there was some uh, peer evidence from the customer that that's the indication. But you never stop, you know, diagnosing, never stop uh, checking things out. I mean, if you have that much loss of compression, it's going somewhere. If you think the tool's leaking too, you can kind of wiggle that around, see if it gets any better. If you didn't have your valve cover off, where all this was exposed and the leaking air would come out past the rings, you could pull your dipstick, which would help. Sometimes you'd really hear that, especially on an engine with a dipstick down there. But since we have all these covers off, we 100% our choices are the tool, which we, we know can hold, could be leaking here, which it's not. We sprayed some water down there. So you got rings, exhaust, and intake. And we're not really hearing anything come out of there, so that puts it all on the rings or piston or something along there so we'll keep moving forward and find out what to do to fix this drz uh, sm supermoto